Should you become a civil engineer in 2021? Well, the labor market just released the 2020 labor numbers. So we can actually see what happened to civil engineers last year. Did they see wage growth? Were there a lot of job losses in 2020? All this and more in this video. But first, what is a civil engineer and what are they responsible for? Civil engineers are responsible for creating and maintaining infrastructure all around the world. And this infrastructure can take many different forms. Civil engineers are responsible for building and maintaining roads, railroads, airports, bridges, harbors, channels, dams, irrigation projects, pipelines, power plants, and more. If there is a giant infrastructure project all around the world, you know that there's going to be a team of civil engineers working on it. Civil engineers can test soils or materials to determine the adequacy and strength of foundations. They provide technical advice to industrial or managerial personnel. They can conduct studies, analyze survey reports, direct engineering activities, and more. So what kind of education do you need to become a civil engineer? Well, you typically just need a bachelor's degree to become a civil engineer. Many people end up getting a master's degree, but according to the Occupational Information Network, a large portion of civil engineers just have a bachelor's degree. In fact, 43% of civil engineers just have a bachelor's degree. They found that 26% of civil engineers had a master's degree and that they have this giant category for 31% other who knows what that could be. I'm sure a certain portion have a PhD as well. What's also interesting is for engineering managers, 46% of them have a bachelor's degree and 39% have a master's degree. So even at the managerial level, you're seeing a lot of engineers just have a bachelor's degree. So it seems like a master's degree will help get an engineering degree, but it isn't always required. And here's the cool thing about becoming a civil engineer. There's a lot of exit opportunities. Civil engineers don't have to stay civil engineers. They can become engineering managers, engineering teachers, entrepreneurs, another type of engineer, and a certain percentage of civil engineers just become software developers. The software industry has been siphoning away engineers for years because there is so many job opportunities in tech via software development or software engineering. A lot of these roles do end up going to engineers. So how are civil engineers compensated? And first, we're going to start globally. Pretty much there are national governments all across the world that release this kind of data. So we're using data from national governments, not companies like Payscale or Indeed.com. So in 2020, the median salary for a civil engineer in the United States was around $89,000 per year. And this was greater than civil engineers in Australia, civil engineers in the UK, and civil engineers in Canada. And this was all adjusted to the United States currency, USD. And one flaw with this is Australia only releases their labor market data every couple of years. So this is from 2018. So the 2020 median salary for Australian civil engineers will be a little bit higher than this. One of the weaknesses of using median pay for civil engineers is that the civil engineers in the top 10% earn a lot more than civil engineers in the bottom 10%. In fact, in 2020, the top 10% of civil engineers earn more than $145,000 per year as a base salary. And a national starting salary for a civil engineer in 2020 would probably be around $56,000 a year. This would be at the 10th percentile of pay. So how does civil engineering pay stack up against the other engineering fields? Well, the U.S. government surveys 16 different engineering fields pretty much every year. And civil engineering, they found, was the 15th highest in terms of pay. Civil engineers earned a little bit more than industrial engineers, but pretty much every other engineering field has a higher base salary. And this is an average base salary. We're not using median here. Civil engineers have seen okay wage growth over the past 20 years. In the year 2000, the average base salary for a civil engineer was around $58,000 per year. And this grew to $95,440 as an average salary in 2020. So engineering teachers tend to earn a little bit more. And this is a possible field that you can go into as a civil engineer. You probably just need a little bit more education. A lot of engineering teachers teach on post-secondary level. So often you do need a master's degree or sometimes even a PhD, depending on the institution. And engineering managers, this is just pretty much every engineering field, every engineering manager gets lumped into this category. Engineering managers are earning more and more every single year. They're seeing a, a wage growth of about $3,500 per year, while just civil engineers are seeing a, a wage growth of around $1,700 a year. So the wages, civil engineers are getting a little bit outpaced by their managers. 
if you were to project this average yearly wage growth into the future by 2026 the average base salary for a civil engineer would be around 107,000, and by 2030 it'd be around 115,000. but engineering teachers and engineering managers are based off the average base salaries over the years they are tending to outpace them in terms of pay so that covers the compensation of civil engineers next up what is the job market like is it challenging to get a job is it competitive the first thing to understand is the civil engineering workforce is the largest workforce of all engineering fields in 2020 there was 300,850 employed civil engineers all across the united states and this was more than the other big two industrial engineers and mechanical engineers the really big advantage to this is civil engineers are often needed in many different cities and many different towns and states across the united states whereas with the smaller engineering fields such as agricultural engineers and marine engineers they're very regional you have to live in very specific places so if it's very important to you to live in a certain town state maybe your family lives in a particular state and you want to live there civil engineering is probably one of the better fields to go into because geographically you're most likely to find opportunities all across the country civil engineers have seen job growth over the past two decades in the year 2000 there was around 200,000 employed civil engineers and so there was a gain of almost 100,000 civil engineers just in about two decades but last year there was a little bit of a dip the number of employed civil engineers fell by about 10,000 jobs and this is mostly because of yeah 2020 the pandemic but this really isn't that bad a lot of fields did see a dip and definitely not as bad as say travel agents where at one point there was maybe 10 job postings for travel agents in the entire United States sometime last year. So yeah, 10,000 jobs is annoying and it's unfortunate, but compared to other occupations, civil engineers are doing pretty well. One interesting thing here is engineering managers actually have actually seen job losses over the years. In the year 2000, there was around 242,000 engineering managers and this fell to about 196,000. So over 40,000 less employed engineering managers over the past two decades. So this kind of signals that this trying to become an engineering manager might be become more and more competitive over the years. The U.S. government is predicting a 2% gain in jobs over the next 10 years. But really, this is determined by politics. You know, if, uh, if President Biden and Congress pass some kind of infrastructure bill, this is really going to create a lot of demand for civil engineers over the next number of years. So the question of demand is actually very political. We could see higher than a 2% gain in jobs for civil engineers going into the future so one way to gauge how competitive this occupation is is to look on indeed.com and if you're interested in going to, into any career you should be looking on indeed.com and looking at different job postings so you can really see the requirements and what you're going to be doing at the job when you do a general search not a title based search a general search of civil engineer in indeed.com across the entire united states i found about 21,000 job postings we can compare this to the number of employed which is around 300,000. So this gives us kind of a one to 15 ratio, which means there isn't a shortage of civil engineers, but it's really not that oversaturated either based off the number of job postings right now. Like I said earlier, there are employed civil engineers all across the United States, but certain states tend to have a lot more job opportunities than others. In 2020, California had the greatest number of employed civil engineers. They had 46,000 employed civil engineers in that state alone. So there are certain places in the country that have more job opportunities than others, but kind of goes back to my earlier point that this is a giant workforce. This is the biggest engineering workforce. So there are more job opportunities than other engineering fields in other states. So that covers the job market of civil engineers. The next question is, would this occupation even be compatible with your interests and personality? And one way to determine your interests, whether you would be interested in this kind of field, is to take a RIASEC assessment and figure out your Holland codes. With civil engineers, pretty much just like every other engineer, they tend to score high in the realistic and investigative theme. This is very common among engineers. And if you take a Holland code or RIASEC assessment, the really cool thing about the civil engineering field you do have the option of becoming either an engineering manager or an engineering teacher. So if you do get into this field and you find that it's not social enough for you and you maybe are more extroverted and you want to talk to people, you know, you can go and become an engineering teacher, even though it probably requires a little bit more education. And then if you're more ambitious and you want to lead people and persuade people and kind of be like the leader of a team and those people tend to score high in the enterprising theme with a Holland code, you do have an opportunity to become an engineering manager. So that's the cool thing about 
this field. As for the personalities of civil engineers, they tend to fall in a couple different Myers-Briggs personality types. The ISTJ is the most common Myers-Briggs type found for civil engineers. Almost 25%, one out of four, our ISTJ is also known as the inspector. There's also the most likely Myers-Briggs types to become a civil engineer. That's actually the ENTJ, also known as the commander. Other likely Myers-Briggs types to become a civil engineer would be the architect, INTJ, the inspector, ISTJ, and the ENTP, the debater. So as you can see, there are pros and cons of becoming a civil engineer in 2021. The pay is pretty good and the United States is the highest paying country, well, of the four I sampled for civil engineers as far as median salary goes. Civil engineers have seen okay wage growth over the past 20 years, but they are getting outpaced by engineering teachers, teaching at a post-secondary level, and engineering managers. This is a great occupation for someone that wants to build new infrastructure, maintain different infrastructure, repair things, and work on bridges, roads, and other giant infrastructure projects. The job market isn't as competitive as, as I would have thought. There was a loss of about 10,000 employed civil engineers last year. But when you look at the number of job postings right now, there's 21,000 job postings for civil engineers. So this actually shows that it's not as competitive as I would have thought. If you're a civil engineer, let us know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on becoming a civil engineer in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna be releasing a lot of engineering videos over the next couple of weeks. So definitely check those out as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.